Good morning, everybody. This update was a little bit harder to find for me today because it wasn't on the official Discord, which I had opened up on my monitor. I actually was checking the chat, and people were like, hey, check Twitter. Uh, or shitter, or et cetera, or whatever it is now. I don't really use it. I think it's kind of terrible. But the buff is the Arc Thrower, and it is going to get a stun effect that builds up on targets, a range increase, and a durable damage increase. So, for those who don't know, what happened was, at the beginning of the game, the Arc Thrower had much more range, and at some point, I don't know if they added a stun, I can't really remember, I think that they're either it stunned originally, or they added a stunning effect to it, so it was long range, and it had a stun, and it was amazing versus Halt. I would regularly take the Arc Thrower on bots, particularly for Hulks. Obviously, there was a lot less threats like Factory Striders and Gunships, so the Arc Thrower was way more viable just due to the, the lack of those enemies being present. But this buff is gigantic, so when you take the range from 35 to 55, I'm trying to think, that's another, what, 20? So that's, what, almost half? I can't do math. We're not going to do math right now. It's extra range. It's great. So the thing, the one big problem with the Arc Thrower in the current build of the game is it's just too short. The range is too short, so you have to run really close to the bots to do anything almost laughably close. And versus bugs, it's all right, because they're coming to you, but it still feels like it's just out of reach of, like, of what you would expect it. Like, you're seeing this giant lightning bolt, and it's just, it's extending out to your enemies and then not dealing any damage, which was kind of just one of the little, one of the many little things that was, like, a nagging. Uh, peeve of the game. Now, that being said, I know the Arc Thrower is effective and it's damaged in its current state 100%. Um, it's been an amazing weapon for certain people. Like, uh, John, my, in my group, is amazing with the Arc Thrower. He can regularly slay top kills and he doesn't gloat or brag or anything. He just kills all the bugs. He's on the bug front. Everything is just immediately dead. So the range increase is the huge, huge, huge better part of that. And they're saying it jumps additional times. So there's a upgrade in the ship that adds a... I can't remember what ship upgrade it is. It adds an extra jump to the arc thrower. So does that mean it's it jumps additional times and then you get a bonus additional time from the uh, ship upgrade? Because then you're going to have a lot of jumps and with a lot of range and a lot of jumps, uh, the bug front is never going to be the same. The Arc Thrower is just going to be just Chain Lightning demolishing everything. With the increased durable damage, it's going to start chunking through things that it normally wouldn't. Because it's double the durable damage. So things like Hive Guards and Brood Commanders, Alpha Commanders. Hell, well, we'll have to see what it even does versus uh, Chargers and Bile Titans. Because you can directly hurt Chargers and Bile Titans with it. It's going to have the same damage, so it's not really going to kill them very fast. But it might be able to blow off their shell more easily. Especially the Charger, because sometimes you'll have a Charger side on you and you'll just be arc throwing away. If you could just zap a side off the arc thrower and pull a primary weapon out, that would be awesome. So that's the big news. That's the big news I'm excited about. It's a weapon I like to pull on bugs sometimes. It's a weapon that people love on YouTube. I don't understand it. People love the arc thrower. Absolutely every single video I've posted with the Arc Thrower gets three times the views. I don't understand you guys, but I mean, I think it's a good weapon. I'm definitely going to be using it more because of this, and I was using it recently on bots, and I was having a blast. So that is the actual news news. And here is the uh, not-so-news news, and this might be something that is, uh, might be something that's fake. Might not be real. Uh, because I know there are ways to modify the game files on PC. And I know there's a way to modify armors and other game files and their visual appearance and not get booted out by anti-cheat so people do custom armors and stuff. I don't do any of that. I don't want to mod the game. So I'm going to pull this over onto my other monitor. These are some things I've seen on the official Helldivers subreddit and Helldivers 2 subreddit. They're posted by two different people. Um... But they might be colluding with each other because the names of the players, K and D, are the same in both games. So, first off, you've got an illuminate great eye just lying on the ground as debris. So someone screen capped this and cropped this jpeg -y image of this here. And then there's this second image of 
a great eye floating in a match. And this was on, uh, I think this was on Mastia. But people are calling out this as being fake because this guy's going, you know, things like it's D1 and K2 in the same game. You'll see this. There's another picture. Um, and this guy says, discovered heavy outpost, and then he says, bunker. But it would have said discovered point of interest, so they're, like, trying to debunk this and say it isn't real. But that is an Illuminate Great Eye, which is a boss from the first Helldivers game. Um, same deal. You got, like, you got K1, who seems to be in all these matches or whatever. K Cake and K1. So people are starting to think it's the same people popping into this. So you got D2. You got Darius Ballandor, so there's another D guy. Uh, it's like possibly the same people. So there's this little squid thing that apparently just, you know, it just up and disappeared right after and no one recorded it. You know, and you've got recording out the wazoo on everybody's devices. So it's very easy to share a photo and then be like, I don't have any video proof. I don't know if these rumors are real, if these are fake. But the thing I wanted to show here, and this is what's kind of curious about this, is if this is a fake model, someone took a lot of time because what you have here is you have the Illuminate Great Eye from Helldivers 1 rotated to match the orientation of the debris that is, you know, supposedly, quote, in this person's game. And it's a pretty good match. But it looks really similar. And here's the other reason why I think this is a possibly not real leak, is there's a lot of talented data miners in the Helldivers community. You can very much spoil the game and know what's going to be coming out uh, if you literally look for the Helldivers leak subreddit or Discord. They're fairly active, um, and they have verified leakers and whatnot. So... All in all, uh, comments, let me know what you feel about the Arc Thrower. I think it's a good buff. I think it's a very good buff for the gun. I'm really excited about it. Let me know if you think this Great Eye stuff is legit, or if you think this is fake. I want your honest opinions on this, because I think it's fake, because I've been following everything in the game, and we haven't seen anything like the Great Eye or this. We've seen, you know, other stuff but not this. So for it to be snuck into the game and the data miners not even finding it would be pretty impressive, honestly. But I think it's some clever model swaps by some people to uh, spawn some things in the game. I don't think it's real. I want it to be real, but I don't think it's real. But if it, even if it isn't real, somebody took some time and care to make this model pretty close. So we will have to see. Time will tell. And uh, I'll revisit this topic if I ever see a great eye in game because I will be cross referencing these photos later because this is going to be documented. So I don't know if these guys are big old farce or if this is really the truth. The truth of Helldivers. Peace out. That is the news for today. That is all the news. Uh, tomorrow is the 16th, should be the last day of Buff Christmas. And then we will have the update on uh, Tuesday, the 17th. And all these different news videos that I posted will come to life. And hopefully they manage to address some of the PS5 crashes. Uh, had some issues trying to join my friends. And hopefully uh, address some performance stuff. I hope it's not just straight balance and spreadsheets. It's great. All these changes are great. But there's still other things I'm hoping for the game. And uh, we'll have to see what other secrets they throw in there, because usually when we get a big update like this, they uh, toss some enemies in somewhere, toss some new threats around. So I'm excited to see what happens in the story and what uh, other things come in the patch, other than just balance changes. Because the balance changes are already kind of out there. Oh, you know what? I forgot something, actually. Where did it go? Aha! I forgot about these. There's more. But wait, there's more. People who listened and waited, you have been rewarded. Shut up, Google. My phone's going off now. Um, the paper that was on the back of uh, one of the sheets they were holding had a bunch of text on it. 
and people used AI and algorithms to break down what these these things said on the paper. I almost forgot about this. And so this has been cross-referenced by a lot of different people, and these numbers are probably accurate. So expect something similar. So the scythe cools down, has different effects, has a low-powered scope. It might have no recoil or reload. It sets enemies on fire faster. So huge scythe buffs. Not sure why, but the explosive crossbow is more explosive now by 37% and another 100 explosive damage, which is ridiculous. Um, the explosion damage on the Eruptor is smaller, but has a bunch of extra fragments. We've already seen all the Eruptor stuff, so I'll talk more about that because I have another image regarding the Eruptor after this. Um, the Defender, which I feel like was a kind of... It needed to have more damage over... Uh, it needed to have more damage over the Pummeler, because the Pummeler was just a better choice, period, for that category. There was no reason to pick the Defender SMG over the Pummeler, but now there is, with the extra damage and durable damage, it's a little bit better. Liberator Penetrator needed some love. The way penetration works in this game, as far as I can remember, is when you do punch through and penetrate, you deal less damage, and that's just how the game mechanic works. So for this to do 40, go up from 45 to 60... It's still not going to do as much direct damage on a fleshy target as a regular Liberator, I think. But um, the punch-through damage will be better because this 60 damage being reduced as it penetrates through armor will uh, be better than 45 being reduced, which is what made the Penetrator feel like crap. So the Penetrator will feel better. And it should. The Penetrator feels pretty uh, meh right now. And here comes the next ones that I'm like, excuse me? If this comes to fruition in the actual patch notes, it will be insane. So, gigantic damage buff and durable damage increase for the regular diligence. The regular diligence. So, they just buffed the crap out of the damage of the regular diligence to almost the same damage as the counter sniper. And with that increase in durable damage, it doesn't have good pen, but with that increase in durable damage on light targets... The regular diligence is going to be light, easy to use, and rip off bug limbs like mad. That thing's going to feel really good to use. And the diligence and the counter sniper diligence, I believe, are part of the Helldivers Mobilized War Bond. So these are things everyone has access to. So these are weapons you typically get fairly early. Um, and for them to be much, much better allows players to have like a semi-auto firing platform. It's going to be even better and more reliable. Secondly... The Counter Sniper, which I would argue is in an amazing spot. I would say the Counter Sniper is in a, in a great spot, but maybe that's because its direct damage is enough to headshot a Devastator that I'm biased in that because I pull it for bots a lot. But with its flat damage increase, um, it's going to punch through Devastator's chest armor a lot more. And they also increase the durable damage. Now, it's increased durable damage, and it's also a very high armor penetration. I believe it's got medium penetration um, weapon. And it has extra stagger force. So I'm like, it's like one of my favorite weapons. It's one of the weapons that I rely on the most on the bot front. It's my go-to when I want to have a reliable weapon. And it's being buffed substantially. That is awesome. And I am super excited for the counter sniper uh, buff there. The blitzer... Apparently has a stun effect that builds up on targets. The wording of this has been argued back and forth by people based on what words they think they can see. But the Blitzer getting buffed is another thing where, like, I literally, this was like a whole meme. When I made the video full auto Blitzer, it was one of the first videos that took off exceptionally well. It's one of my most viewed Helldivers videos now, actually, if you go to my most viewed videos. Um, it was a great mission, I believe, on, uh, oh god, what planet was that? It was a fog planet on bugs. I can't remember what planet it was. But it's one of the new swamp ones. It's awesome. Uh, the Blitzer's reliable. The Blitzer's great. The Blitzer staggers things away. And with its impotent ammo, it's a great weapon. But if it has a stun effect that builds up on targets, that's going to be great. Because if it builds up on targets, it's going to be very particularly good versus Alpha Commanders and things that don't die immediately to the Blitzer. Uh, and possibly even Devastators at that point. So excited for a Blitzer buff. And everybody joked like, oh, because you've talked about how great the Blitzer is, they're going to nerf it now, you know. And it's just like, come on. I'm like, 
I saw that like a lot. There was a lot of comments like that. It was not a good time for the community, though. Lastly is the torture. And the torture, because it's a personal primary flamethrower, its damage is not enough usually to kill things fast enough in front of it. And it leaves you extremely vulnerable because the DPS isn't high enough, so you're sacrificing all your range for a weapon that doesn't even have enough DPS to kill a melee enemy chasing right up at you. Um, I do believe, and this is what I believe I heard somewhere else, was that Berserkers, the uh, lovingly called the Meat Saws by my group, are uh, getting less health in the update, but they're going to still deal a lot of damage. Um, the Torture, as of now, doesn't have enough damage to punch through and kill a Berserker. It struggles. It's going to have the old flame mechanics and better armor penetration, which is going to be awesome. So, let's see if I can pull this up here. This was, um, this was a post from someone who compared the armor penetration and damage of the Jar Dominator and the Eruptor and did all of the math and all of the changes. So what he was trying to show is the explosion is going to be, um, I believe, bigger. But the damage is going to be, the actual explosion damage of it is going to be smaller. Like the actual explosion of it. But then it's going to have fragmentation shrapnel with slightly lower penetration. So... His consensus was it's going to be better against groups of light enemies. That's why I made the video that it shoots frag grenade rounds, because it really does. It's just a frag grenade on a stick now. But with the uh, the damage of the primary part of the hit being uh, lower damage, that means the direct part of it is going to be less important, but the fragmentation part of it is going to be is going to be um, better. So we'll see how that works. Let's pop over to my other monitor here and see if there's any other news. Nope, just buff number six, arc thrower. So pop back over here. Yeah, so that's the news. That's all the stuff that I can dig out and find. This is all the stuff I would share to my inner circle. This is all the stuff that I would want to show to people as far as news and things so in addition to the arc thrower being buffed there's a lot of other potential weapon buffs and this was data mined off the sheet of paper that the devs were holding in their videos so not 100 100 sure on this but multiple people have used ai and enhancing features to data mine this information so very well may be true and they may have intentionally done this just to troll us which is sounds on point for arrowhead honestly that is their sense of humor it's just this in your face it's in your face and you should see it but you don't always see it and that's kind of how the whole game's lore is so i will see you guys tomorrow when they drop the last news before the update and when the update finally drops i'm going to do a breakdown of the whole patch notes and then i'm going to start bench playing the game probably for a week until the forever winter comes out and uh then i'll be posting both hell divers and the forever winter and that's my uh future plans here there's a bunch of dives posted for today i have enabled memberships totally optional but the people who do have membership i will uh have a community post they can post on to jump into discord jump into uh, my Discord and try and get some matches. And it's a way to support the channel. So thanks for all the likes, subscriptions, comments. I love the discussions. I love reading all the comments. I like all my comments when I... when I heart all my comments when I read them. So anything I've hearted is something I've 100% read. So definitely want to see what you guys have to say about all these buffs, all these rumors, and all this news. I will see you guys for the news tomorrow morning.